Continuing on with The People Before by Maurice Shadbolt. Here we looked, we finished off by looking at the title of the story. Um, we looked at this part and this part. The people before the Maoris were so intimately connected to the land that they have carried the old man to the spot where he was born so that he could see it one more time before dying. They have a real spiritual affinity with the land in stark contrast to the father and the narrator. Compared to the Maoris, the narrator's father frequently talks of selling the farm when the going gets tough. The land is just something that he owns and puts to work. Some quotes to look at and take note of and use in your exams. Sorry, exam, singular. His life was committed to tame an order from wilderness. This is talking about the father. He wants control. He wants control over his land and he wants control over his life and he owns land because that gives him control in his life in comparison to his own father who always worked for somebody and didn't have land of his own. Another quote about the father, it was characteristic of him not to look back. So he didn't look back to his memories of the First World War. He didn't look back to who owned who or who might have owned the land before him. This hints at the fact that he has difficulty looking back on his life and that there are things in his past that he'd rather not remember. I thought Jim needed looking after. He wasn't anywhere near as big as me. This is this hints at the fact that the narrator is a kind big brother and he looks out for his younger brother. It also hints at the fact that Jim is a weaker and smaller boy than the narrator. And this next quote here is the father talking. You'll make that brother of yours a softy. The boy's got to learn what work means. This shows the quite traditional opinion of the father that everybody needs to learn how to work hard and that if you are a softy, someone who doesn't like to work on the land, that's a negative thing. Her look seemed, this is about the mother, her look seemed to say that one child of hers at least was going to be saved from the muck of the cow shed. We really don't hear much about the mother in this story, but this small quote here shows that she wants to protect at least one of her sons from working on the farm and from the father. I suppose that was the beginning of how Jim became his mother's boy. I remained my father's. I wouldn't have traded him for another father. I liked seeing him among people, a man among men. This quote tells us quite a lot. It tells us that Jim is his mother's boy. And it tells us that the narrator is much more like his father. So we've got Jim and the mother on one side of the family and the narrator and the father on the other side of the family. It also tells us that the narrator adores, loves and almost idolizes his father. He wouldn't have swapped him for another father. And it tells us something about the father as well. I liked seeing him among people, a man among men. It shows us that the father can, when he's amongst other people, he can hold himself, carry himself, just as much as other men. 
Love, in any case, would have been an extravagance. This is about the father. An extravagance means something big that is um, not necessary for life. Like an extravagance would be to go out and buy a second iPhone if you already have a first. And love for the father is an extravagance. It's not necessary for his life, which is really quite a sad thought. Also about the father, he'd fought a losing battle for Jim and now accepted his defeat. He was no longer going to fight for Jim to work on his land. He'd given up. He'd accepted defeat to the mother and to Jim. For one black moment, it seemed I had been robbed of something which was rightfully mine. I don't think I'll ever forgive him. This is the narrator talking about when him and his brother Jim had met up after the Second World War and they'd both been talking about what they had used to think about um, during the war to stop themselves focusing too much on the battle, the war. Jim had focused on the farm while the narrator had not been able to. And, he, and the narrator therefore feels that Jim has stolen, metaphorically, the farm from him. The narrator had worked so hard on the land, on the farm, that he felt it was his. But actually, Jim had much more of a bond with the land. Even though he hadn't enjoyed working on the farm, he had much more of a spirit, spiritual bond with the land, much like the Maoris. The ending to this story is very important. Linked in with this quote. Jim becomes associated with the Maoris and the elder son becomes more like his father. The elder son and his father worked the land and made it something, made it worth something financially. The Maoris and Jim, however, were interested in the history of the land. However, the narrator feels that the land was his and his father's, not Jim's and the Maoris. Jim saying that he missed the farm during the Second World War was interpreted by the brother as Jim staking a claim in the land that the narrator and their father had worked so hard on, and he feels like he's stealing it off him. Symbolism in this story. The Adzes are symbolic. Jim's attempt at restoring the greenstone Adzes to Tom, the Maori, the young Maori, is symbolic of an attempt at restitution. Restitution means making up for a wrong. And the reader is left to interpret Tom's reluctant refusal. Is this Tom saying that the Maoris cannot forgive the white Europeans for stealing their land? And the green adzes symbolizes the fact that the Maoris cannot forgive. Obviously, the land in this story is symbolic. The land symbolizes the different attitudes of the Euro Europeans and the Maoris. The Europeans see the land for financial gain. They will buy the land, they will work it, and they will make money from it. The Maoris, on the other hand, see the land as symbolic. It is their home, it is where their hearts are, it's where their stories are told about. Very, very stark contrast between how the two groups see the land. It also represents the different personalities of the two brothers. And the narrator symbolizes the Europeans' vision of the land, while Jim symbolizes the Maoris' vision of the land. Some themes in this story. We have ownership, 
Who owns the land and how is this defined? Have a think about that and the difference between the Europeans or the white New Zealanders descended from Europeans, the British, and think about how the Maoris think about the land and their link with the ownership of the land and the fact that it was stolen from them. Um, cultural ignorance. The Europeans are culturally ignorant of the Maoris. They have um, a negative and prejudiced and racist opinion of the Maoris, believing that they are all drunkards who don't work and just want to um, live off other people's money. And this is linked in with another theme of prejudice mostly seen in the father and his treatment of the Maoris and also a little bit in the narrator's character. The land is also a main theme in this story. The cultural differences of people and their varying attitude to land. The narrator's father has bought the land as he did not want to work as a share milker like his father did in his youth. It was the thought of his land that kept him going through the First World War when he was fighting in the trenches in Gallipoli, which is um, somewhere where they fought in the First World War. In spite of this, he does not have an intimate bond with the land, whereas the Maoris do. When things turn grim, difficult, during the world depression, he is ready to sell out and move elsewhere. The return of the Maori elder to the land to die and his disappearance is another indication of, his un of this old Maori man's unity with the landscape and again demonstrates the different attitudes to land held by the Maoris and the Europeans. These are attitudes which remain polarised in the brothers at the end of the story. The importance of land ownership. Land equals the independence of individuals. Owning, <clears throat> owning land is important so that you don't have to bend down to others. When you have your own land, you don't have to work for others. His father's land is described as his own little kingdom and his castle is the farmhouse. A quote you should make note of. Ruling over his land is equal to ruling over his kingdom. And there's a quote here, which you should also make note of. The importance of owning land in New Zealand culture. Back then it was difficult to make a living in New Zealand apart from working on the land. Europeans displacing the Maori from their land. The land had belonged to the Maoris before the Europeans had taken the land away by force. It was stolen. This suggests that the Maoris were the true owners of the land, and their history ran much, much deeper. A quote here to show you that. And some essay questions. In what ways, ways does Shadbolt strikingly portray the importance of land in, peop in the people before? Explore the ways in which Shadbolt shows the different relationships with land in the people before. Focusing both of these is on land. How does Shadbolt strikingly contrast the father and the Maoris in the people before? This focus is on the characters and how different they are. How does Shadbolt memorably portray the power the Europeans have over the Maoris in the people before. This fo question focuses on the power of the white Europeans and you should discuss the land in this. How does Shadbolt make you feel when you read the ending of the people before? Focusing on the character of Jim and the narrator and how they cope with differently with the Second World War. and how they both think differently about the land.